Beautiful. All right, everyone. So welcome. We're up to uh, chapter 13 in Shmuel Aleph, the first of Shmuel. And it starts off in a rather very strange pasuk. And see if you can figure out, and you can even see it in the way that it's translated. Ben Shana Shaul B'Molcho. Almost, we won't translate her quite right now, but we'll get through it. Ushte Shanim Malach Al Israel. So, Ben Shana Shaul B'Molcho can be either translated, it almost sounds like he's, Shaul is one years old when he started his reign. Ushte Shanim in two years, he ruled over um, Israel. Your or, text, or, you, sorry, you don't see the text, text is not on the oh, screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. Here we, are. Here, here we are. Does everybody see it now? Yeah. Everybody yeah. sees it? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Ben Shana Shaul Bemolcho. Or it could be on the first in the first year of Shaul's reign. Ushte Shani Malach Al Israel. In two years he reigned over Israel. Um, it's a it's a rather perplexing uh, 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 verse any way you read it. Um, and there are a couple of explanations. One is Ben Shana Shaul B'Molchom. When Shaul started, he was totally it's a it's it's a saying like he was a one year old. In other words, he. He had, there was no experience, right? I mean, uh, he's the first king. He's not, he doesn't have anybody to emulate. He doesn't have a system um, that he's that he's following, but he is the first, the first one, the first, the first king ever, Ben Shana. And then Ushtay Shani, Malach Al Israel, this is in the second year of his reign. So Ben Shana is not literally. Uh, others say um, that he was not given uh, just, just as a one year old. Just a, as a one-year-old, you know, doesn't sin, um, is perfect, so to speak, in 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 is not wicked, cannot perform any any wickedness. This is what Shaul was. Shaul was just like just like a one-year-old when he started his reign, and this is taking place in his second year of reign while he's on Israel. Obviously, you cannot you cannot you can't reign on Israel one. This is the first year of your reign, and your unless well you're Hamas, you know, this is the, your first mandate of eighteen years, right? So it's a, uh, I guess it's it only happens then, but that's another story. So let's continue going on. Vayfchar lo Shaul shloshet alafim mi Israel. Shaul handpicked three thousand men from from Israel. Vayu im Shaul al time, from whom two thousand were with Shaul bam michmash be michmash in michmash u behar beit el. So in other words, there were three thousand. We did chose two thousand of which were with him in Michmash and Uvehar Beit El in the hill country of Bethel. The Elef and a thousand of those men, Hayu in Yonatan, the Givat Binyamin, they were a thousand were left with his son in the hilly country of Givat Binyamin. The Yeter Ha'am Shilach Ish Lo Alav, the rest of the troops he sent back to their homes. So in other words, we had we have two thousand who were literally are with she, with with Shaul. Hi. Vayach Yonatan et Netziv Plishti no. Asher Begeva. Um, yes, hello. Hold on one second. Okay, everything okay? Yes, yeah, somebody, I was just hearing somebody say things. Yeah. Okay. Call me tomorrow at the office. Speak well, sweetie. I love you. Bye. Right. I want to make sure if, if, if you're going to have conversation, if you can just make sure that you're you are muted because we can hear you just for for everybody's um, just like privacy. Vayach Yonatan et netziv plishtim asher begeva. And Jonathan, Yonatan, who is, who is uh, Shaul's son, he struck down the Philistines um, right off uh, in almost, all, as it says, perfect. He was a perfect uh, 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 sortie uh, in Geva. Vaishmeu Plishtim, and this went back to Plishtim in terms of um, the great victory which Yonatan had. Vishaul Takaba Shofar Bechol Haaretz Lemor, and Shaul had the ram's horn and he sounded it throughout the land, saying, Yishmehu Ivrim let the Hebrews hear. So, in other words, they were rejoicing over this victory which Yonatan um, uh, had, had, had over 
um, over the Philistines. The whole Israel shamul emor, and when all of Israel heard, ki hikash Shaul et netziv plishtim, that Shaul had struck down the Philistine <coughs> perfectly, gam nivash Israel ba plishtim, and only that, but Israel had incurred the wrath of the Philistines. All the people rallied to Shaul at Gilgal. So this is again, it's a little bit backward because who beat whom? Did Shaul beat it or Yonatan beat it? Beat it? So. No, it said Yonatan, right? Let's go back. Vayach Yonatan et Netziv Right? So it was not. So it's basically, it's like an, it, 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 it's, it's, Yonatan, of course, is not an independent uh, uh, army. He represents his father. Although he was at the head and it was his battalion that had won the victory in the greater scope, of course, it comes under the kingship of, uh, uh, or under the leadership of Shaul. So it is as though Shaul is the one who's responsible for, for the victory. Sure. Did somebody had a question? Yes. You, you, so the, the text, the English text, refers to the prefect as in a single person rather than the armies of the Philistines. Right. And, and the same in the previous... I, I I I I don't. Can you? Just... I don't. So I'm not. I'm not. The reference is as Nazi flushed into the as, a, as it's translated the prefect or the the leader or the right. But it, it, it's reference to to one person being struck down rather than an army being annihilated or right. Destroyed. Right. Um. I I it. it I, I think with with the prefect in terms of um Netziv is somebody who who was appointed as as the uh, uh or, or the leader um but I think to get to to the to the to the to the, to, to the Netziv or to to the representative um he had to he had it was like a perfect shot it was like a um uh the sorte was was without any blemish in other words it was it was it was Without any hesitation or any uh, resistance or change, so it could be that it was only just one per person, a netziv plishtim, um, but it's also uh, in the, in the sense that that one person that was struck down, it was as though everyone was defeated. And, and the, if maybe it was my recollection wrong, but the the number three hundred thousand that rallied. To Saul was it was it three hundred thousand in the last session you pointed out the parallel between the three hundred thousand mobilized in the war and the three hundred thousand that were gathered but it, was it this so it was not this one the better this, this was wait this was beforehand this was this was a couple of chapters ago the three hundred but they were gathered to the banner of Saul no yes yes then, that was yes yes. Yes, that was Good. when Shaul was first anointed as as uh, um, as king. That was beforehand. Now, now he's choosing from amongst his ranks three thousand people, two thousand of, of which are with him in in two different encampments, and one of them, or uh, one thousand, is with with Yonatan, his son, and Yonatan is the one who has who just had a, a, a victory. Okay, yes. who basically. Uh, beats uh, uh, the 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 leader of of whoever he was against in terms of the police team that were were in front of him the battalion that was in front of him. So when all Israel heard that Shaul had struck down the Philistine prefect, <laughs> let me just turn this one on. The Gamnivash Israel ba team and that up until now it, the the Israelites. Um, were were being punished or were being under the 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 were struggling under the wrath of the Philistine. All the people rallied after Shaul at Gilgal, and what happened? The Philistines in turn also gathered their forces to uh, to, to do battle with the Israelites. Shloshim elef. Rechev Veshet Alafim Parashim, three thirty thousand chariot riders, not necessarily chariots, but but riding on chariots, and six thousand horsemen. Ve'am Kachol Asher Al Sfat Hayam Larov, and troops as numerous as the sand of the seashore. So, in other words, 
a huge army. And they went up and they encamped at Michmash, Kidmat Beit Aven, east of Beit Aven. So in other words, in, in response to Yonatan's, Yonatan's <laughs> victory, as the Israelites also gather and uh, uh, they, 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 they all uh, encamp together with, with, with Shaul, here, in turn, the Philistine as well gather their forces, and they are a huge, huge number. Ve'ish Yisrael ra'u kitzar lo. And suddenly the Israelites noticed that uh, they are in, in a very, very precarious situation. Kinigash uh, ha'am for uh, the... the the, the 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 troops began to feel pressured. Vayit chabu ha'am b'me'arot uvachavchachim uvas uvaslaim, and so the 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 men, uh, out of fear, they hid in the caves. They hid among amongst the bushes, the thorns, and amongst the big rocks. Uvats richim uvaborot, and in the cisterns and in the tunnels. In other words, anywhere that they can hide. Um, when they saw the amount of, of Philistines coming forward and encamping on them, um, they started to hide. The Ivrim of Bruit Hayarden, some Hebrews crossed even the Jordan, Eretz Gad ve Gilad, all the way to the ter ter territory of Gad and Gilad. The Shaul, Odenu va Gilgal, and ha Shaul, however, did not make it yet to Gilgal. The Chol Ha'am Chardua Harav. And the rest, those that were still with him, were following him as well. So he's coming, he's coming to battle. But those that were present, that saw the numbers of Philistines, um, they were scattering and whimpering around. Vayochel shivat yamim, and he waited for seven days. Asher Shmuel, until um, till that time that Shmuel had set. But velova Shmuel hagilgal. However, uh, when Shemuel failed to come to Gilgal, the people began to leave or wander away from Shaul. So we can still see something very, very interesting from this pasuk. Number one, um, although the people cried out, cried out for a king, and they rallied after uh, Shaul in the previous chapter. At the end of the day, who is still seen as having a lot of uh, followership and structure? What's the structure still? Shmuel. Shmuel. In other words, Shmuel still holds a very, very important rank. A very the 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 structure of 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 the um, of the power, or at least of leadership, still very clearly that Shmuel has a lot of clout and that people follow him. Could very well be that it's still young in Shaul's. Uh, reign and so he still hasn't 100 percent made you know like his name well known um or two not necessarily everybody yet has gotten to know shaul like they know shmuel so Sh shmuel brings a lot of value um to shaul in other words when shmuel and shaul are together shmuel is giving shaul a lot of credibility it's very clear okay Vayomer yeah. Shaul, and so Shaul orders, Hagishu Eli Haula Vashlamim, bring me the burnt offerings and sacrifice of well-being, Vayal Haula, and so they presented and they made these burnt offerings. So, in in if you remember, if you remember the uh, the, the 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 weeks beforehand, every time Shmuel, remember he met, he went up to when Shaul met Shmuel for the first time, it was because they were doing. They were doing um, uh, uh, offerings, and that's where Shmuel met him. And then, then he 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 ordered again the people to make sh uh, uh, different sacrifices, and they both ate together. And that's when he presented. This was the way that they sacrificed in those days. The way that they uh, showed uh, uh, belief, or or they practiced in terms of um, uh, their connection with God. They didn't have yet prayer like we do. Uh, they didn't. The, the temple was not yet established. It was it was done. Almost at, at 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 ad hoc or or places where was necessary. They were not going to go up yet to to Jerusalem as later would be. Vahi, 
as Saul was finishing bringing up the burnt offerings, and who shows up? Shmuel suddenly makes an appearance. And Shaul goes out to greet him and to welcome him and to bless him. Shmuel Shmuel asks him, What have you done? Um, Vayomer Shaul, ki ra'iti ki nafatz ha'am me'alai. I, 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 I did this because I saw that people started to leave. Uh, people started scattering around. Leave me. Vatalo vata lemor ha'imim. You told me to wait seven days, and I did that, and you had not shown up. Uflishtim ne'esafim michmash, and the Philistines are continuing to gather. Um, and and a mass at Michmash. So in other words, the um, what was it seems like Shmuel is angry at Shaul for doing what? What is it? What 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 is his grievance? Doing what? What have you done? Have done what? Well, let's clarify what what is he arguing for Shaul? What has Shmuel done? He didn't follow his instruction to the letter and didn't wait the full seven days before offering the sacrifice. He did not, right. He, 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 Shaul did not tell, Shmuel did not tell him to go offer sacrifices. Okay. So, and he wants to know why, why did you on your own decide to um, make these sacrifices? Va'omar, and this is Shaul continuing to talk. So, I, so I, I, I was thinking and I said, the, and I said, I, or I figured, now that the, the, the Philistines, any moment, they can come down and attack us at Gilgal. And I have not asked or, or, or presented myself before, before the Lord. And so I, 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 I forced myself. Uh, and so I was, I was pressured into into um, uh, bringing these bird offerings. In other words, he's saying there was the, the, God was not with us. Why? Because they were waiting for Shmuel. So he's saying, I you know you were not here. You didn't you didn't show up. And any moment we were the the police team could have attacked us, and we did not make any. We didn't bring godliness into the camp. And so you give me no choice but to go ahead and to offer these sacrifices. And we have the Samech. This is the next chapter. Now we're next next. Next paragraph. Shaul Niskalta, and Shmuel rebukes Shaul and says, Niskalta, you acted um, foolishly or, or or with 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 wrong intent. Lo et mitzvat Adonai You did not keep properly the commandment that which God had commanded you. Hi ata, and now. Otherwise, otherwise the Lord would have established your dynasty over Israel forever. He goes, you did not follow him in the law, and you have given up something. And now, now your dynasty will not endure. Bikesh Adonai lo ish kil vavo, for the Lord will seek out a man after whom God sees is going to be proper. And God will later on appoint that person as the leader for his people. For you have not kept that which God has commanded you. So within a very short time, we see the 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 um, zero tolerance, uh, maybe if you want to say, uh, policy of, of following God's commandment in terms of exactly to the letter letter of the law. If somebody, by the way, has has just something going on, just please make sure that you're 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 muted as as we hear things in the background. Um, and so, especially also setting setting the the um, if you want to say the first. The rules right away. In other words, there, there's no fiddling or diddling. We can clearly see that the king is just an instrument of God. This is not like the other kings of the other kingdoms that they pretend that they are deities and their word is like the word of God. Now our king, 
w whether the, the 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 Israelites wanted the system or not, the the king is bound by following God's word. And who's the intermediary? You have the prophet. So in this case, it's Shmuel. Does everybody see that very clearly? So when we say king, it's not like a king that has can do whatever whatever the king wants. The king is still bound to follow the instructions laid out by God. And who gives out the instructions? It's usually the prophet. Okay, so right away, the first faux pas, what happens? Shaul gives up right now. His dynasty will no longer endure. In other words, it's not going to go down to his um, descendants. This is the 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 monarchy will not be uh, remaining in the family. And so, any questions? So the prophet is the representative from God. Yes. And he At selects the king, or God tells him who to select. God tells him who to select, just like just like God told Shmuel who to select. He yeah. told him a tall man is going to come to you. He, if you remember a couple of chapters ago, he told him whom you're going to meet. That will be my somebody who's going to be outstanding. He says, and it was very clear that it was Shaul was was stood stood above uh, was was regal stood, stood above everybody. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. see that there's zero tolerance, and it's specifically that way because the people asked and kvetched for a king, and right away we see that a king is what. A king is just like every other human being that can make mistakes. Doesn't follow the letter of the law. Just like what? Like the people were not doing. And the people were punished. And mm -hmm. the king is also going to be punished. So yes, the king has a leadership role. And if the king does not follow the dictate that laid out by God. In other words, a king is also a servant of God. Maybe that's the way if you, if you want to look at it. Not any different than any other person. Except that the king has responsibilities to whom? To God and to the people. So the king is actually not free from responsibility. The king is the one who makes sure he actually has, has extra responsibility on, on, on his plate. So Were there a lot of kings? Time. Pardon? Were there many kings? There were many kings, yeah. Time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hopefully we'll get through, we'll get the, we'll get the, through all of them, but yes, there were, and some, and and you'll see there's a structure, as I mentioned, there's a structure of, um, you know, uh, I don't know, did anybody uh, watch uh, Game of Thrones? Yes, Any, sometimes. Yes, so you know, there's a there's there's the hand of the king, right? Like, I'm in other words, the the one who who is the right hand man of 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 the king or queen. They're the ones who give them, you know, the wise, uh, um, you know, advice and 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 suggestions, and 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 they're wise. They can they can you know, uh, strategize, etc. Here, the right-hand man of, of the king is the prophet. Okay. And part of that is because the kingship is not just a democratic, elected, you know, do what you want, and the king can choose whatever the king wants to do. No, the king is really there just because the people had this vision that they 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 needed they needed a leader more like the other nations around them and they can relate to a pharaoh like person uh, uh, sitting up on top of the th the throne giving them instructions that they can relate to god who's everywhere can't be seen you know you can't it, it was too uh, well, it was too difficult for them to, to 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 accept plus the leadership the way that it was going whether it was through the kohanim or through Shmuel, that they were handing it down, their sons were also corrupt. So they thought, hey, why not try a different model? But this model, again, is built in with the guidance of God. And being it the first, if you want to call an experiment, the first one, there was, I mean, it's going to be, there was literally zero tolerance. They could not do anything. Otherwise, eh, they can also make a mistake. They can do whatever they want. No. So because he did not follow the letter of the law, that's it. Shaul's, uh, uh, Shaul's monarchy would not be passed down through generations through his blood. Vayakam Shmuel vayal min ha-gilgal givat binyamin. And right there, Shmuel left, and he left Gilgal, and he went up to givat binyamin. Vayifkot Shaul et ha'am an-intzaim imom. And there, 
Uh, Shaul numbered the troops who remained with him, Keshesh Ish, about 600 men. So Shmuel leaves him, and Shaul is left with about 600 uh, men in, um, in, in Gilgal. The Shaul, the Yonatan Beno, now we're just giving again. So Shaul and his son Jonathan and all the troops that were there are are encamped. They remain in Geba Binyamin, and Plishtim are still encamped at Michmas. The raiders, and here comes, and this is where the war begins. The raiders came out, and this, these are not, by the way, the uh, Las Vegas raiders. Okay, and anyone who follows football, this is not. These are these are the original attackers, if you want to say. So these are they come out of the Philistine encampment, and they are in. They're filed in three in three long uh, uh, columns. Okay, three rows. Harosh echad ifne el derech afra el eretz shual. The first column. Heads headed to Ofra, the road that leads to the district of Shual. What's Shual, by the way? District. Shual is is a fox, and by the way, Shual is the uh, the fox. By the way, is um, is is the uh, if you look at Binyamin, that's their that's their uh, symbol. Is a is is a, is a is a Shual. And another column heads towards Beit Choron Road. The third column heads to the border. The road that overlooks the valley of Seboim towards the desert. So if you actually look, it's actually a flank. So one this way, one to the right, and one to the left. If you kind of want to look at it towards towards uh, uh, an attack. So they're they're going to, the, a three-pronged attack. Yossi, what's the uh, K with the, above in the word border? Pardon? Why is there a, like, a K? So this is just a program. If you hit it, there's going to be, we'll take you to a different, uh, 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 like, uh, commentary and different things. Okay. So if I hit, if I click here, here, you see, they'll give you a different commentary. Reads Geba wrote, so it's 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 a it's a shorthand for the program in terms of kind of like this is a, uh, I don't know I'm not exactly sure who 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 this who uh, Septuagint is but uh, that's it, so you see that that that's the Greek translation that was written by seventy scholars based on what they had ah, but okay okay that yes, was the yes, Greek yes, translation. Yes. Of Giba, okay. So in other words, reads Giba, okay. So so that's that's what the, the that is. So when you you'll see sometimes different letters if you go through. I know you noticed that K now, but here you'll see a little M and N. Do you see it? Oh, okay. And they have they have a little uh, um uh, how do you call it? They they have little explanations or or um, commentaries within the text that there's you can you can read it. Usually, if you want to read uh, uh how do you call it uh. uh a particular way or, or, or a translation. The Harash. Thank you. Lo, is, that, is that okay? The Harash lo the whole Eretz Israel. However, there was an issue because no blacksmith was, was to be found in the land of Israel. For the Philistines were afraid that the Hebrews would make swords or spears. So, while the Philistines were uh, 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 ruling over different sections of of the Israelites, they ban they they banned any any uh, working with metal. They did not allow there to be any blacksmiths. Why? Because, as you hear, Philistine, the lest the 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 Hebrews make swords or spears against us. So they they. They were not allowed to, the Israelites that were subjected under Philistine rule, were not allowed to uh, work with, with metal. And so, 
So what happened in those days when there was no none? All the Israelites would go down to the various cities of the Philistines, Lil Tosh Ish et Macharashto, Vet Eto, Vet Kardumo, Vet Macharashto. Any metal uh, um, working tool that they needed for the fields, or, or whether it be their plowshares, their mattocks, axes, or coulters, sharpened, whatever they needed, who would do it? They would have to go into the Philistines' town. So, in other words, the Philistines controlled controlled, um, if you want to call it, in those days, metal was seen as the source of also weaponry. It was a very important um, commodity, not just in terms of gold and silver, but uh, blacksmiths and that particular trade was also important for for army, for weaponry, and for self-defense, for making armaments, etc. And so the Plishtim did not allow the Israelites whom they controlled to uh, to learn this skill. The charge for sharpening was a pin uh, for plowshares, mattocks, velishlosh kilshon ul hak radumim ul hatziv hadorvan, and there was a three pronged fork and axes and for setting the goads. So, in other words, they were not allowed... Uh, uh, they, 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 there was limits in terms of what uh, uh, metal objects the Israelites were allowed to have. What's a goad? A goad? I'm not sure myself, actually. For setting the goads. Uh, oh, sorry. Goads are, um, I think, to take out the... the uh, like a, a certain type of... Um, uh, you know, when we when we work, we have like it's not quite a shovel, but it's like a big, big uh, three or four pronged uh, uh, thing that we put in that we toil. Fork. The, like, like a, a fork, fork, exactly. So, but hadorvan is to take out all the um, uh, uh, um, earth thistles, all the thistles. Like if you would want to, you know, if you're working the ground and you yeah. want to take out any any uh, bad uh, type of growth that was there, whether it's. Uh, um, uh, New, uh, like like um, new, what 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 takes over the field? Uh, uh, not shrubbery, but um, you know, like in between in between your you have you have weeds weeds your weeds. But these were these were also weeds with with uh, with thistles and thorns that would mm -hmm. not allow you to grow things or that would actually take over um, your 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 stock, whatever you're trying to grow. And so they were limited as to what. Types of um, of of metal metal tools they were able to have, okay. The okay. hayab and that therefore. So they kind of, if you remember, if we go through the text of 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 Torah or Nevi'im, sometimes it jumps back and forth. In other words, in order to to understand what's happening now, they suddenly go back to before this time, and then they're coming back again. So they just gave us two, three psukim of what were the rules before this engagement, and now that is the reason why they don't have the equipment now. That is why, on the day of the battle, today, no swords, no spears would be found in the hand of the troops with Shaul, with Yonatan, Vatimatzele, Shaul, Yonatan, Beno, the only ones that were able to, to, to carry a sword were only Shaul and Yonatan, his son. Okay, so basically they were they were not they were unarmed except for Shaul and Yonatan. El Ma'avar Michmash, and now the Philistines garrison is marching out of the pass of Michmas. And they're going towards battle, towards the Israelites, who is led by Shaul. Okay, so this is just a setup for the battle to come, um, and and as well the the idea of of what the subjugation of the Philistines were on the Israelites. Um, you know, we hear we hear a lot of 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 there was fighting and and, and you know they were subjected. It was very clear that since the time of of uh, of of uh, Yehoshua, Yehoshua, in which 
they were taking over the land. It was very hard to keep the entire people together, let alone to keep them protected. So now we also understand in terms of um, the mentality of a tribe that was together for 40 years in the desert. Think about it. No matter, even if it's, even if it, we think of it as a great number, um, they were not able to think for themselves. They didn't have to protect themselves. They were, they were literally, you know, uh, spoon fed. They were, they were literally carried on an anaya kavod. Some, you know, some commentators say they didn't even march. You know, they were literally like on a magic carpet ride, so to speak. You know, through with, with the clouds of glory. Um, they had food coming down. They, had, they were sheltered. Only one or two battles took place in which God uh, against Amalek, and then later on with Joshua. But until then, they were all protected. And suddenly now they have to grow and, you know, fend for themselves. For a while they would. We we read some battles of, of Yehoshua, which went well, some that, that went not that great because of them not listening to God's exact instructions. But over the time, again, they splintered and they lost control and different nations around them would be able to, who were established there as well, would more organized maybe, more, more um, um, socially uh, organized. They had an army, they, 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 they had, they had their, their, their factories that they needed to do, that industry. The Israelites had nothing. Um, and here, this is what you find. You find almost, it, it almost sounds like, um, you know, the, uh, uh, Milchemet, you know, the, 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 this is the, 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 the 1948, you know, where they, they com compared to what they had, they had no armament, they had nothing. They, they had, they were, they were, they were barely even armed, um, for, uh, the war of independence. Um, but we'll see what happens. And this is very similar as well. Um, this is part of what the King was responsible for, not only bringing them together, but really forming, if I want to say, an economy of some sort, some kind of a an established social order of a, a, a of, of a country of a of a people united, but also people that had a, a common interest. And what would that common interest be as well? One of those things were, of course, security. So, if you were living in the in the north, you would be no less, um, you know, no less involved in the security of the people in the south. And if you were lived in the east. You were no less involved in the security of people who lived in the West, whatever it might be. But as as a whole, as a group, you would be one united. And this is where um, I think we really recognize how how infantile the 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 social structure of the, the Israelites were, were were at the time. Plus, that they did not have full autonomy of all their sections, depending of where they were. So near Plishtim, which was right now literally near Gaza, near Ashkelon, all that area. So and what we would not on on the coast, the western southwestern part of, of of Israel right now, all that that area, and then moving towards. Let me show you. You know what? Let me. I'm going to share with you. Where is it? It's here. Is there any connection between the word Palestine and Philistine? Actually, no. It's not not nothing to do with it. Plishtim and Palestine, nothing. Yeah, I believe. That's back to rest. I always had that question. <laughs> yeah, it's not. So, does everybody not yet? Does everybody see the map? No. Oh. What is it? The... Huh. How come? Does everybody see the map now? Yes. Yes, the map so, was there. So in the Plishtim area was around here. This is where Plishtim lived, roughly. Just to give you. Giboa, we had this store today. And it they are they are fighting somewhere around here. 
okay, in around in around here. Um, we had the Beth El, Gilgal, all these. Right now, everything's happening happening within central, what we would call central or or or, or central eastern Israel. Um, okay, but this this right here along the coast is where where uh, um, the the police team were, and they were when they when they when they felt felt that they had the upper hand, they would move eastward and try to control the uh, um, um, all, all, or at least subject the 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 Israelites that lived there, whether it's through taxes, whether it was through to make sure that they you know labor, um, whatever was in those days customary of of subjecting. Um, Sometimes it would be as well taking, you know, women, taking uh, 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 slaves, etc. This was the type. One of those things, as we learned today, was that they 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 outlawed any type of 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 uh, blacksmithing, uh, wood uh, working with metals, for specifically to to make sure that the Israelites cannot uh, uh, be strong or 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 pose a threat, but. This is where this is the region right now that we're looking at. Okay, so this was a hotbed of of trouble for the Israelites. This is this is a, a thorn in their side, if you want to say it. And this is going to be a constant. Um, you'll see a battle. But uh, the funny thing is, you'll see uh, with, with David, um, it also comes back to bite Shaul as well. So the Plishtim always were were a thorn on um, Shaul's side, if you can say that. Okay, so so this is this is right now the 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 part that we're talking. Gat, by the way, Gat is where Goliath was from. Was from Gat. Okay. Any any questions? So if you want to see the, but this is what. I can just where can I get my? There we go. Let me get. Come, I can't get it to be smaller. No. Here we go. No. Huh. Won't let me get it. Uh... Now I'm going to show you. Let me show you. That one is gone. Close that. And here we go. Does everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Do you see, do you see with it? So this were, were the seven nations that were around. And you can clearly see where, where you have the Philistines, you see it on the left hand side where mm -hmm. Gaza is, where I showed you. Mm -hmm. So, this was roughly, although there's not here, yeah, here. This is the okay, this is this is roughly where where they were. You can tell Jerusalem is here, Gibo is here. It just it give, gives you a little bit of an, of an idea. This is right now, if you had to look like uh, Tel Aviv is like here. Roughly, or maybe a little bit more north, somewhere like here. Haifa is up here, you know, right here. Jerusalem is here. Beersheba is right here, bottom. So these are the four biggest cities in Israel. Right now, currently. Haifa didn't really exist. Although it existed in some kind of format, but not Haifa as we know it. Um, and of course, Tel Aviv didn't exist. Yafo is, is, is here. Somewhere, Yafo, that, that, that is one of the older cities in Israel. Um, anyway, this is it's it's the west the western coast. Of course, also what do they have? They also have the ability of receiving goods by sea. So the the Philistines did have the ships, etc. I love to, I love in terms of people think, but you can you can clearly see the mountain range that goes across. You know this one, which almost one third of 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 Israel, and then it is 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 quite. Aside from the south, of course, when it becomes hot, but it's it's quite difficult to, to live in in terms of uh, the 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 region. This is the, the as as you move more towards the coast, this becomes 
so to speak, like the hilly side. So this is the mountainous side. Then it's like the hilly side. And then this is like the flat side, which makes sense, right? If you if you think about it, it's the mountains, then it's a hilly side. And then and then you have the flat, the plains. So the plains are the closer you get to the to 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 the Mediterranean Mediterranean Sea. And yes. then when they talk when they talk about the hills of you know, a particular tribe, it's usually their, their Western, depending where, where the tribe's, uh, um, you know, province was, where their section was, it would be along this corridor. So um, let me just erase it. So if we remember, like, uh, Binyamin is like here, somewhere like that. So this would be the hilly side of it. And then this would be, let's say, the 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 western part of would be the 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 hilly side of it. Does that does that do you understand? Yeah. So it's it's a, it's 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 ge it's geography. When they're talking about the hills and the mountains, it's it's a geography of of uh, uh, juxtaposition in terms of where you're at. It's to give you a, 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 a an idea of where you're at. It's not like like the it happened to be on a hill. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Somebody has a question. Yeah, it's Farla. I yes, just want to ask you since uh, Jaffa is old, and how do you know how old? And my question is, I was wondering if there's been a lot of archaeological finds there. There have been a lot, a lot of, uh, and and there's still things that are 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 being being found there. Although it's now it's much limited because it's it's quite. Um, it's quite, uh, uh, you know, developed. Um, it's I don't exactly know the dates, but it it is one of the most ancient of of cities. Um, you can easily you Google it; they'll tell you exactly from 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 what you know when 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 it when it was. I can I can easily do it. Um, but the it it was a port for for thousands of years. Thousands, not not, not thousands of years. So Yona, for instance, Jonah, um, he he sells out of the port of Yaffa, Yaffa. When he goes out on his, you know, and he gets swollen uh, on on the ship, and then he gets swollen up by the uh, by a whale or however you want to look at it, whatever whatever um, uh, sea sea creature he gets, you know, uh, uh, swallowed up by, that happens. He leaves from from uh, from that from that port. It says it's more than four. Four thousand years. Yeah, yeah, it's thousands of years old. It's a very, very old ancient city. Very good point. As is others as well. We have um, so in Israel we have old points of interest, um, like in the wilderness. In the wilderness, where you hear that you know there, there was a, a goat that was sent to Azazel and all that stuff. That's points of interest. It wasn't really an inhabited place, but it was used. As as a point, and then we have literally uh, places uh, that were uh, like Yericho was a uh, you have Shechem, you have Jerusalem, you have as we said we have um, uh, uh, Be'er Sheva. Although most of Be'er Sheva, you know, like it's 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 not exactly where we're known, but it's in that area. Uh, parts of it is within right now proper Be'er Sheva. You also have uh, um, as, as you have Yafo is one of those. And and you have along 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 the the the, the coast northward as well more of the the, uh, the the cities that were later on you know developed by in Roman times that you you'll have like that's Caesarea for Caesarea comes from Caesar um, you have of course you know Miron where we have for uh, Har Miron where we have we have Sfat which is also a very ancient city uh, less so than 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 Yafo but but ancient ancient as, uh, as well. You know what I mean? Varia. Varia, yeah, exactly. It's Varia. But but the 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 uh, the which was normal in 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 you know there's there are certain lands that were that were not as active in terms of uh conquests and wars and fights and I don't have to tell you, you know people look at it and say um, you, you look at Israel today, and you and and you you get you have a, a, a quite unfortunately we have an understanding. You know, we live we lived for for a number of years, which were 
relatively peaceful on what we, you know, there were, there were antifadas, et cetera, but they were, you know, relatively uh, uh, quiet. But um, this is unfortunately indicative of, of life, life uh, for Israel. When, when, when we hear, you know, for David, you know, there were 40 years or we, we heard, you know, the, the land was quiet for 40 years. These, these were, it was quite rare. There were always, all the time, there are wars and, and um, unease and, and, and upheavals in, 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 in the land. It's, and so by that, just by that alone, there were, uh, as well with the conquest of Joshua, you know, there were, there were cities that were, you know, decimated, um, finished and burned to the ground. So you'll, you know, gone. Um, and uh, all those would be left perhaps as if, if you do archaeological finds, I'm sure you'd find some kind of, of, of traces of, of old stuff, but some of them were, were, were literally uh, had to be decimated and destroyed. Um, and that, that goes the same way for little communities that would live, didn't really have that opportunity to, to develop into, into um, you know, bigger communities. So not that many other places that were considered established cities like 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 the ones i've mentioned before you know like and 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 one of those is is yafo as i mentioned that's when you go there people don't realize it because it's it's you know right next to tel aviv and you say oh wow it's like old montreal no it's not it's just old montreal is you know working towards celebrating you know it's 400th year and this is going to be you know celebrate its 4000th year you know like it's a it's on a total on a different scale really on a different scale well, if history teaches us anything, this history should teach us to never be off our guard. Um, or, yes, uh, unfortunately, we're not. I, I, I believe. I think one of the most interesting things that we, 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 we learn when we are um, together is that we're learning of all, all of you know the the, the different cycles of of you know following god's rules and not and, and then being punished and and it's not only different in our day in a different way um we of course don't have you know the same tools that the people then had um but nonetheless i truly believe that there is a certain you know consistency in terms of what we are supposed to to uh, behave how we're supposed to do it you know not following do following ways of 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 being civil with each other our, our, ourselves and we have we have records in terms of when we are not um you know showing respect one to another um the calamities that come before us as well uh, but i believe you know for those you know sun motzei shabbat and sunday morning i don't know about you but um that was we witnessed i think a miracle in terms of what the success rate of of, of, of what occurred if uh, just 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 think about it of of it was just unbelievable, and if that's not, you know, you you if you're if you're you're sitting there and you say, yeah, you know, technology is amazing, you know, yeah, I I would you put yourself under two hundred or was I think three hundred eight or whatever it is uh, projectiles, whether they be dumb bombs or smart bombs or how, however you want to call it, anything coming towards you, um, and would you sit outside, you know, with a with a with an umbrella and say, oh, yeah, but we have technology, or would you? You know, would you would you worry and tremble? Yeah, Absolutely, right. worry and tremble. So, and yet, and yet, what the success rate for? And and thank God we have also we we have friends that that you know Israel had friends that that came up as well, stepped up to the plate, and Jordan and Egypt did as well their part, and of course the the United States and Saudi Arabia, um, which perhaps we're seeing a change in 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 uh, we're definitely seeing a new Middle East occurring before our eyes and 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 going. Um, let's just hope that uh, you know cooler heads prevail on all sides. Um, I just uh, came from. I just listened to a lecture with three very knowledgeable men um, talking about Iran and that the world has to realize that Iran is now a new. Um, it's it got new leaders, like new new thinking, hard, much more hardcore thinking. And it's just the leadership, it's not the people, but that the world has to realize that there's, they have to deal with them now in a different way. Because according to them, they think that Iran really wanted to kill people. I mean, I know that, you know, they warned everybody and all that, but this is what they said. 
for me. But there's it. definitely a new, if you want to say a new normal. Um, I don't think I, 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 I you know, the, uh, I say it in a very tongue in cheek, you know, you know, two buildings fell in New York, that a city that has a million people, you know, two airplanes fell. Think about it. How many, how many air accidents are there? You know, how many flights are there in the United States? Of course, we know that it was done on purpose. I'm not, or three, I should say, because there was as well, you know, there were a couple in the fields. Um, uh, sorry, it would be four because it was one that fell into the thing and one fell into the field. So four airplanes out of, I think there's 15,000 flights a day or something, if not more in the United States. So you do the math and you say it's, it, it's safer actually to fly than than it is. There are more car accidents per capita that happens than than there are, you know, like like accidents in the air. So, but if you look at it that way and you, you know, you, you, you're, you're saying, what do you mean? It's a, you, you, you can't look at it. So imagine imagine two 300 projectiles being fired at you <laughs> it's it's 300 not you know like somebody like we try 300 projectiles you know um and 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 99 of them intercepted and and destroyed most of them not even crossing over to the border and uh um i don't know if this aggression is also technically you know you use other people's airspace um it's it's an aggression against Saudi Arabia, it's again against Jordan as well, and I don't know where else you know where where they crossed. Technically, it's 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 you know you can't you can't you know fly a bomb over somebody else in case you know false. Sorry, I didn't mean it for you. Um, and you never know next time they can shoot it at you. You know what I mean? And and if you say, oh no, it's for Israel, and it's not not aimed at you. Um, it's it's a, it's a, it's a definitely a total different Middle East of what is acceptable or what is no longer a surprise and that's that that's really the this the the to me the scary part of it is you know you want to you, you want to you know test bombs can you you know yes so you test bombs in your own you know in the desert in your own uh place or whatever or in the, you know in your own proper ocean whatever whatever you want to test it but you don't you know what i mean you, you can't just fire you know and 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 it's just ludicrous for the world if you know, no, nobody would 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 stand or 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 ask for self restraint. You know, but this is still different. It's not a, this is not a regular. Israel is a very different uh, uh, case study than any any anywhere else. You know, you, you I want to see Mexico shoot one bomb at uh, how do you call it? You know, in, into the desert into Arizona and see what happens. And 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 you know, the world calling on the United States to show restraint, let alone throwing two hundred you know missiles into the size of if the country would have been the size of new jersey and then you know one bomb from mexico will not reach new york city you know here here you're talking about the tiny little little little, little place it's um uh, it's 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 quite you know mesmerizing but at the same time literally we witnessed you know a miracle um or at least an abnormality that you we have to call for what it is that is quite an unbelievable achievement so thank god and you know Literally, what we say in 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 bechol dor vador, right? In every generation, the Kadosh Baruch Hu matzilenu mi adam, and God saves us from 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 their hands. You know, and you can see it. It's it's quite it, it it's amazing when you're singing it. God willing, you know, and in ten days and in a week week's time and in, in on Pesach, um, it should have a total different meaning. Every time we sing it, you know, thank God for the last number of years, it, it almost didn't have any relevance to us except in memory was a nice thing to remember um we 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 you know hanukkah or 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 purim is is don't forget purim happens in persia this is where this is where the story takes place starts in in what modern day iran is so it's uh, in persia so it's this is not this is not this is not something new in terms of the hatred and and their desire to 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 wipe out uh, you know Jews and, and 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 anything that is not 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 their not their um, uh, not 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 their own. So it's uh, it, it's amazing. It really is amazing. Any other any other uh, points? So let me.